Hello everybody and welcome back to the 2017 recap. Today we're going to be looking at this little forest documentary me, Josh, and Patrick made about probably, I don't know, three or four months ago, back in October, which was covering the problems facing the murders continuously happening up in the upper Pennsylvania mountain area. And with that, I hope you enjoy the video. See you guys in the next one. And we will talk more about what's going on in 2017. People go missing. They go missing and some of the bodies are found without a head. Some of the bodies are just never found. And they all disappear up here. And it is kind of the perfect place, isn't it? This morning, two dead. Now the coroner in Monroe County calls those deaths homicides. An officer on routine patrol made the discovery early this morning near a park. Uh, typically, explorers will get lost due to veering off the trail or it getting too dark and them not having any flashlights. Now the problem with this is not only can you get lost, but there could be also possible predators in the area. And today we have Damage Condemned Alex. What's up, bro? Hey, how we doing? There's a lot of violence in these old mountain towns in Pennsylvania because they were all mining towns. And when the mines tr dried up, it became just nothing but poverty and terrible, terrible tragedy. And because of that, these days, those towns have a lot of murder, a lot of problems, and it's all forgotten about. And that's really where, what we're trying to do. Is it really as crazy you say it is? We're at mile zero. Just got here. It's really, really pretty. Uh, since it's autumn, all the leaves are changing color. And it creates a pretty cool atmosphere. But at the same time, right now we're experiencing a lot of fog. Just a slight bit of rain though. For the most part, it's holding off. I think that's the gate she was talking about. Yep. So we should be just about the beginning of the trail. Hit the gate, we'll be on B, and we head straight for like a half mile. Yeah. The year 1768, the beginning of Pennsylvania mining. Anthracite, or hard coal, would be the preferred resource throughout the 19th and into the 20th century for heating homes and moving locomotives. For years, the people of Pennsylvania would live high on the hog. Everywhere in the Keystone State, new communities were forming in the mountains around these new mines. To give some scale, understand the city of Pittsburgh was consuming around 400 tons of anthracite coal a day. It seemed like the money would never stop rolling in, and by 1914, there were over 180,000 men working in these mines of the Keystone State, setting a new employment record for the entire country. But all good things must end, and it wasn't long till things would take a tragic turn for the residents of these now well-established mining communities. All right, so we just got past the gate, head towards M Trail. Not exactly sure how far. The uh, rain actually decided to let up a little bit, which is awesome. starting to pick up. Making me a little nervous with all the cameras. Hopefully it slows down soon, otherwise we're gonna have to uh, hold off until the rain subsides. So we do take this? We take a right. Well, no, because, well, yeah, okay, that makes sense, yeah.
Here's the VNM cross right here. If that's the case, I would should cross both of them, not just one. I mean, what's the worst case scenario? We backtrack a little bit and then we see. There's no trail. And you walk back here anyway. Well, what do we got to lose? Not much. Just three years later, in 1917, America got the black gold fever and 26,000 coal mining jobs were lost. This was the beginning of the fall of one of America's biggest industries. By 1970, only 6,000 men were left in the coal industry, creating a level of poverty that still has its hand around the neck of these mining towns to this day. With no money to be made and no money to escape these towns, many people are still stranded in the dying corpse of yesterday in the mountains of Pennsylvania. And where there is poverty, there is crime. So our current situation is we came, what we thought across was the V&M trail. However, that's the water, but there's no M trail. So we're gonna track back a little bit, see if we can find it. If not, then we're just gonna have to find out plan B. The trail was a good place to find for animal tracks because the surface is mostly dirt. During the 1800s, the trail was the main dirt road between villages of Leonardsville and Sailorsville. So if we're going on the trail this way, right? And the river's here. That means it V's out and hits about here. So it's not gonna be the most obvious trail. Ooh, yeah, buddy. What would you say if I told you I found the trail? See? It, and you're trying to say that it was all the way back there. Okay, let's go. <sighs> Ran across into a river. However, can't cross it. We might be able to. See if we can find a way. Around down here. Uh. Shit. Okay. Well, I got drainage holes in my. Only a few families would be successful at leaving town before it was too late. Truth is, too many people are stuck here in the mountains. Some towns so bad that one fourth of the population is still to this day unemployed. Some families have lived in the same house for 50 years, not by choice, but due to lack of choice. They are forgotten. Surrounded by raw beauty, yet unable to afford to explore it fully. This video may never reach many, or even be viewed to this point. But for those who get here, we need to find a way to end the nightmare in whatever way we can. All right, everyone. So we're deciding to call it a quits. Uh, we're starting to get blisters on our feet. And if you know anything about that, you need to take care of your feet. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. So with that being said, thank you for tuning in on our exploration. We'll catch you in the next one.